For centuries, there had been vague rumors, fanciful stories, puzzling passages in ancient books. And for centuries, no man had the curiosity and courage to investigate the remote wilderness where strange and wonderful ruins were said to exist. In 1839, however, two adventurers began to explore the wilds of Guatemala and Honduras. John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood barely believed themselves the wild stories that had lured them here. It was true, there was not one great abandoned city hidden in the tropical jungles, but scores of them. Catherwood, an artist, faithfully depicted scenes that would amaze the world. Perhaps to justify centuries of conquest and exploitation, all Native Americans had long been characterized as ignorant barbarians. Stevens wrote in his journals, America, say historians, was peopled by savages. But savages never reared these structures. Savages never carved these stones. Architecture, sculpture, and painting, all the arts which embellish life, had flourished in this overgrown forest. Orators, warriors, and statesmen, beauty, ambition, and glory had lived and passed away, and none knew that such things had been or could tell of their past existence. More than a hundred years have passed since these words were written, yet many of the mysteries and all of the wonders Stevens felt endure to this day. On the eastern coast of Mexico lies the fortress temple of Tulum. It is but one of more than 80 known major building sites of the people known as the Maya. Their civilization rose soon after the birth of Christ, but it had disintegrated before Columbus reached the New World. At their height, the Maya spread through much of southern Mexico and Central America. The Maya were master builders and artists. Their expressive portraits of themselves and their gods preserve the Mayan spirit across a gulf of a thousand years or more. Who were the Maya? What inspired their soaring culture, so advanced, yet so unlike anything known elsewhere in the ancient world? The single most comprehensive view of Mayan society is provided by the spectacular murals of Bonampak. Lost in deep jungle, not discovered until 1946, three vaulted rooms are embellished with paintings 1100 years old. The predominant scenes and characters provide at least a partial understanding of Mayan life. Always the central figure the imperious Mayan lord. The Mayans ruling class undoubtedly proclaimed themselves living descendants of God. Maya religion and learning were closely intertwined. And in the same period when Europe sank into the dark ages, the Maya intellect soared. This is most probably a Mayan observatory. 
We know the Maya's knowledge of both astronomy and mathematics were remarkably advanced. Their calendar was more accurate than the one in common use today. An archaeologist has observed, the rhythm of time enchanted the Maya. The never-ending flow of days from the eternity of the future into the eternity of the past filled them with wonder. And it seems more than coincidence that the sun sets at points in line with the ancient stone viewing ports on the precise days when summer and winter begin. centuries of patient observation and record-keeping could account for the Maya's astronomy. The fruit of this was power. Who could question the divinity of the leader who could foretell when a shadow would pass upon the moon or the sun would disappear? Among the foremost living authorities on the Maya is Dr. Eric Thompson, now retired and living in England. The, the ruling families among the Maya, we know, uh, claimed to be representatives on Earth of the great god Itzamna, and they were able to um, arrange things for the benefit of the whole community. In other words, the um, farmer needed his range at certain times, and the... Um, Members of the priest nobility said, OK, we'll fix this up. We'll put in the ceremonies uh, to bring the rain when you want it. But on the other hand, you'll have to help build the temples because unless we have these temples and structures like that to the honor of the gods, why the gods are not going to let you have the rain when you want it. The great ceremonial cities of the Maya were built without the aid of metal tools by men who had no wheeled vehicles, horses, or oxen. Magnificent in concept and design, they reflect centuries of dogged labor directed with amazing ambition and intelligence. Frank Lloyd Wright. Here a grandeur arose in a scale of total building never since excelled and seldom equaled by man. The characteristic Maya pyramids had long been accepted simply as towering stages for ceremony and religious sacrifice. But Alberto Ruz, head of Mayan studies at the University of Mexico, suspected that at least one pyramid might be something more. Dr. Ruz was drawn to the Mayan city of Palenque, deep in the rainforest of southern Mexico, and to one particular pyramid called the Temple of the Inscriptions, since the first day I entered the Temple of the Inscriptions, my attention was called to this slab, 
forming part of the floor. It has holes with stone plugs that you can pull out and replace. Ruse removed the slab and began excavating rubble beneath it. A hidden stairway was revealed, leading down into the heart of the pyramid, a twisting descent of 70 feet. In 1952, after 12 months' labor, Ruse discovered what had never been found before in a great American pyramid, the tomb of a Mayan ruler, sealed for more than a thousand years. The skull was covered by an elaborate jade mask and along the stairway from the pyramid top to the tomb itself, a hollow tube. Evidence that the Maya believed that somehow they might inform the dead or receive his commands. Inscriptions on the stone slab covering the burial have been partially deciphered. They indicate that the ruler was born in 650 AD, came to power at the age of 28, and reigned for 12 years. Evidently, the entire pyramid was designed and built as his memorial. The absolute authority of the Maya ruler was certainly basic to the rise of their civilization. And Dr. Thompson believes it may also have led to its downfall. Maya culture, of course, reached its height around about 900 AD. And then you find the city's ceremonial centers being abandoned one by one. I think myself that there was a revolt of the uh, peasant class against this group of the nobility, that the nobility were getting too much involved in more esoteric forms of religion. And I think that they were getting too much involved in warfare. And therefore, they lost the sympathy and interests of the peasant. The fate of the Maya civilization and many other crucial questions remain unresolved. And this is all the more frustrating to scholars because of the Maya's obsession with the passage of time and the keeping of records. Maya hieroglyphics adorn countless statues and ceremonial buildings. So far, they are only partly deciphered, despite exhaustive scientific analysis. We have learned to interpret the Maya number and dating system, a sophisticated arrangement of bars and dots. We owe much of our knowledge to the three existing Maya books. No one can say what knowledge was lost when countless other books were destroyed. Scientists can only read with anguish the report of a Spanish bishop who wrote, we found a large number of books, and as they contain nothing but superstition and lies of the devil, we burned them all. Well before the Spanish came, however, Mayan society had abruptly declined. Disease, drought, warfare, or revolution, one or all may have been the cause. We only know that the massive buildings suddenly ceased. The great ceremonial cities were abandoned, and the tropical forests reclaimed the mighty evidence of Maya achievement. In the late 1930s, a series of scientific expeditions sought confirmation of reports that traces of an ancient culture, very different from the Maya, could be found in a remote area of Veracruz. The evidence discovered could not have been more dramatic. Gigantic stone heads averaging 18 tons were found up to 80 miles from the nearest natural source of stone. The name Olmec was given the newly discovered people. But who were they? How did they relate to the Maya? By mere chance, a vital clue was found by expedition leader 
Dr. Matthew Sterling. One of the workmen told me of having encountered uh, with his whole bit of solid stone that was projecting above the ground. So we excavated this and found this bar and dot date running across the back of the monument. We deciphered it and found that it carried a date of November the 4th, 31 BC. That's a, a very interesting point because it had always been assumed that the Maya had invented the long count system of numeration, which is a very accurate calendar and a continuous calendar. And that was always looked upon as probably the greatest single achievement of the Maya. It uh, now seems quite certain that it was uh, the Olmec who invented this calendar and that the Maya took it over from them. November 4th, 31 BC a full 300 years before the oldest Maya date. Thus the Olmec were recognized as the apparent source of all American civilization. But further excavation has yielded more questions than answers. Typical of the cryptic traces of the Olmec is a group of miniature jade figures discovered in 1955. Evidence indicates the Olmec intentionally buried the figures more than 2,000 years ago as part of a symbolic ritual. Positioned exactly as they were found, the figures surely portray a scene of vital importance to the Almec. But is this an assembly of their gods or a confrontation of men? They stand today enigmatic messengers from the distant past, firing the imagination but defying analysis. Today, further excavation has traced the Olmec back more than 3,000 years and posed a significant dilemma for archaeologists like Yale University's Michael Coe. We have no idea where the people came from who, who made these monuments. We've only compounded the problem at sites like La Venta and Tres Apotes and San Lorenzo because we've made Olmec so old and pushed it so far back that it has no precedent. Now, ordinarily, when people are confronted with a situation like that, they say, well, they came from overseas. They came from Asia, or they were Palestinians, or they were peoples from Northern Europe, or anywhere else, or Africa, for that matter. I'm not willing to consider this right now, but someday we may be forced into such a thing. Right now, I will take the conservative point of view and say that there, somewhere in Mexico and Central America, there will be found a place, a region, which has evidence for early sculpture, early sculpture and early art that's more ancient than the Olmec. So far, however, uh, I must admit that I'm baffled. To seek the genesis of American civilization is to confront one of the most explosive issues in archaeology today. Many scientists maintain that civilization in America was a spontaneous development, uninfluenced by other cultures of the ancient world. But some suspect that a full history of America would reveal epic ocean voyages long before Columbus, before the Vikings. They contend that the ultimate beginnings of American civilization are not hidden in the remote recesses of the land, but must be read in the winds and currents of the open sea. As man has sought to comprehend the remarkable genesis and variety of life on our planet, the theory of evolution has revealed the ultimate common ancestry of all living creatures. The
dazzling spectrum of life eventually included the man-apes of Africa and after some millions of years, men like ourselves. Migratory game herds may well have lured the first primitive hunters onto the American continent. It is certain that the first Americans came from Asia and spread southward from Alaska. Moving gradually, generation after generation, they populated a new world. They were men of the Stone Age, striving for mere survival. The true discoverers of America, they probably had not even the concept of what they had done. Later, civilization rose in America. Man's intellect soared. His society took on new creative forms. In the rest of the world, the rise of civilized man can be traced back to common roots. America seems to have seen a separate and isolated path of human advancement. Or is there instead some connection between, for instance, the pyramids of Mexico and the roughly similar ones built in ancient Egypt? The parallels are enticing. We have long known that the Egyptian pyramids were the monuments and tombs of Egyptian rulers. And we now have discovered that at least some Maya pyramids in America fill the same function. Some forms of ancient American architecture show remarkable similarity in design to structures built in the Far East. Miniature statues of four-legged animals mounted on wheels have been found in American excavations, and similar ones were made in the Far East. Strangely, the practical use of the wheel was never utilized in America, though the principle obviously was known. Could the Pacific coast of Ecuador have been reached by Japanese fishermen thousands of years before the voyage of Columbus? Recent excavations here have suggested this highly provocative theory. Smithsonian archaeologist Dr. Betty Meggers was an advisor on the project along with her husband, Dr. Clifford Evans. They have carefully analyzed puzzling specimens of ancient pottery from the Ecuadorian site. 